It's a lot of opportunities. Y'all don't want to hear no more problems and no more excuses. Y'all can keep the problems and the excuses. Keep them. Everything else, a lot of it is just your mental health is so messed up that you can't focus. And I get it because it's hard. Because every day we on these damn phones. Every day this content and this social media is constantly pulling us. And it's destroying us. And the content that we consume is killing your life. People are complaining about Erica Mena saying the N-word on Love and Hip Hop. As if the whole show is not a distraction. The whole show is trash. I don't care if some people are making money. People always make money in capitalism. Doesn't mean that the product that they making money off of is good. So when you consume and trash like that, what you think your mind is full of? Now you go try to focus after that? How you go focus after you just consume trash all day? How you go how you go try to be a soft woman? How you go try to be a good man to consume and trash all day? How you go start to try to get in a relationship but what you see in yo is nothing but terrible conflict resolution? It's nothing but bad relationships. It's nothing but drama. How you going to have peace in a house after that? If that's what you consume, you're going to start reflecting that. This is why I'm glad you all watch High Level Conversations because this is good content. This content to where, okay, I just listened to something intelligent. Now I'm thinking. So now when you operate in your business, now when you operate in and you're moving in, in your structure, now you're operating from a completely different thought process, from a high level thought process. You can't. Listen, the human body is a frequency absorber. You can't sit there and absorb negative frequency and think that you're going to emit positive frequency. That's not how it works. <laughs> you, you, you think that if your food goes into a microwave or it goes into some situation where it absorbs radiation somehow, that you're going to get anything other than radiated food and substance out of that? It's the same thing with your body. So if you're literally consuming it within your cells, within your body, it's tuning you. So I don't know how you think that you're going to produce something other than what you consume. Nah, man. And the people who make that, they know. They prey upon you. Ain't no love in hip hop. It's a death trap. We know that. But I need us to understand this because this is very important. We have to remoralize our minds. I've, I've gotten caught up in it. Endless scrolling. What the hell am I even looking for? I'm learning to like really set my phone down a lot more. Like, now I don't even want it in a room sometime with me because the attachment that I have to this device is too high. And you know it's bad when the CEO of the company has to tell you to stop using his product so much. That's like a drug dealer coming to the crackhead saying, man, man, hey, man, you came back too many times today. I can't take your money. Slow down. So <laughs> when Tim Cook got to go on record saying that, listen, you should not be using a phone as much. It's not meant to control your life. It was meant to enhance your life. But the way that we give babies these phones and the way we give babies these sugars, you're creating unnatural addictions to things that are highly addictive. Everything about social media is created with a factor of addiction to increase utility, to increase usage of it. It's not just a tool, it's a drug. So... Because people don't want to parent no more, they throw their kids in front of this particular drug, this device that's way stronger than your child mind, and that that device controls your child. Your child doesn't control that device. So the symbiotic relationship between man and machine is already being merged. So people say, I'm never going to put a chip in my skin. I'm never going to do that. But your phone is a chip that you carry around all day. The only difference is you haven't embedded it in you, but you telling me that you don't want something that you pay and carry it around all day long. You go keep it on your pocket, keep it on your persons, keep it next to you. But you're saying that this thing that you keep is a part of some conspiracy of evil, yet you won't go nowhere without it. So how do you think the next generation is going to see this? The next generation of Gen X and Gen Z, man, they just tapped in with it. So when they say, hey, you want to put something in your brain, you want to put something in your body, you want to interface with a deeper connection and make your life better, they're going to be like, give me the chip. They're going to be like, put it in my brain. You know what I'm saying? It's going to start with, you know, the Vision Pro with uh, uh, um, Apple. It's going to have people connected to reality in a different way. And a lot of people are not talking about this enough since the announcement, but this Apple Vision is going to change things because it goes from being over your eyes 
to inside. So it's getting closer and closer and closer because it's going to change the interface. Well, eventually we won't be holding these phones. They're going to say the phones is toxic, right? They're going to say that it's, they go, they go say that we got to switch devices because of the doom scrolling, because of the, 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 the engagement on mental health is not good. And the UN and the world leading experts and people are saying that one of the biggest issues is the mental health decline of society globally. So that means the same way that they going at the ESG, the same way that they going at the climate control, they going to start going after mental health, right? So now everybody's going to have to start making all of these devices in their businesses mental health friendly because it's getting too bad. The, de the degrading of the mindset of the generation that's coming up. So, so you know, it, it, it's getting bad and it's here. So it's going to have to change the way we do products. Mindfulness is going to be a huge business. So when you're talking about from an investment standpoint, from an investment standpoint, companies that are in the health and the mental health field that start to solve these problems, they're going to get major contracts with the government. They're going to be the ones that are 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 certified as investor friendly. Like, hey, this company promotes mental health. This is why Apple is in the health field in the first place. COVID has increased the amount of mental health issues that society have. Increased it by tenfold. Social media has increased it. Now, they're going to try to blame a lot of stuff on the last pandemic, but it, those numbers were already going in that direction. All it did was increase it. The sad, stress, anxiety, depression, suicide. The sads are terrible. Why? Because of the meds. Mobilization, automation, digitization. DB, we know it has nothing to do with the actual reality, but they are mafia. They've been controlling things. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about ESG, it don't matter. If, it, it matters how much power they have. <laughs> we know that, of course, they utilize it for their agenda, but they do have power. And it's not going to just be an ESG. Even when that goes away, they're going to come up with more things to say that this is how we grade this to be good for public health and public safety in society. It's been BS. So I'm looking at 20 years out, 30 years out, where are we headed, right? Where are we going? So we have to pay attention to the changes and we have to pay attention to the triggers because it lets you know what is happening and what is going to happen because you got to invest in the future. You don't invest in the present because that investment is already taken up. So now we're at this point. Mental health decline is at the highest rates that has ever been. Stress is at the highest. Anxiety is the highest. Being able to be at one with self, being able to be at peace with self, and then operating in the world, man, is a complete advantage. You know, people have so many anxieties, and we constantly put ourselves in the anxiety of living in a world where people don't know how to stay uh, afloat. You know, uh, people have to worry about rising prices and on food, on transportation, on communication, right, on everything. And they're trying to keep up with this and people are getting displaced, people are losing jobs, people have future shock, which is an increase in disorientation um, and anxiety because of the vast changes and shifts that are constantly happening in reality and society consistently. So learning how to deal with that is to think ahead and do these experiments in your mind so that when these things do change, you are not getting anxiety because you already ran it in your head. You ran the scenario of change in your head.